Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. Our topic for today is about winning and detention of the children system or the RAS. The winning and detention of the children system is a major regulator of blood volume and systemic vascular resistance. But before we go further, uh, Winnie was actually uh, an inspiration for a song. There was a singer composer when he heard about the word Winnie, he said, I'm going to compose a um, song about Winnie. But when he read reviews about Winnie, some articles say that Winnie is mean because Winnie is the first step in increasing the blood pressure. And when the blood pressure is high, it can lead to cerebrovascular accident or um, atrial fibrillation or kidney diseases. But it also thinks that, well, sometimes you need to raise the blood pressure, especially if the blood pressure is low or you're in a state of shock. But to make the long story short, he wrote the song Renin, and the song goes like this. He's Renin Min. Hallelujah, he's Renin Min. Amen. God bless Mother Nature. Corny. All right, back to the topic. So, um, I have a picture here, uh, actually a drawing of the nephron. So I draw this one. And the most important part of this drawing are the ones colored in um, pink and yellow. So the one in pink, that is the afferent arterial. In the afferent arterial, we will find the juxtaglomerular cells. And in the juxtaglomerular cells, we will find our beta-1 receptors. The juxtaglomerular cells are the ones that secretes renin. So you get the um, afferent arterial into the um, um, filtration, to the proximal convoluted tubules, to the descending, ascending lock of Henle, into the distal convoluted tubule under the collecting duct. So in a day, the kidney filters around 180 to 200 ml, uh, liters of uh, blood and about 10% or 1.8 liters becomes urine. So the one in yellow, that is the distal convoluted tubule and that is where the macula densa cells are located. So we have two important cells here, the juxtaglomerular cells and the macula densa cells. There are three mechanisms that warrants the secretion of renin. Okay? Number one, um, decreased renal arterial pressure. So when there is least, less blood flow going to the kidneys, the juxta glomerular cells will release renin. Number two, when the beta-1 cells, the beta-1 receptors are activated, then juxta glomerular cells will um, release renin into the bloodstream. And number three, when the macula densa, um, um, the macula densa, macula densa is the sensor for sodium. When the macula densa senses that there's low sodium in the distal convoluted tubule, then macula densa will tell um, juxta glomerular cells, juxta, can you uh, uh, release renin? And then juxta will release renin. And if you look at the picture, they are really close to each other. Um, the jacks, the afferent arterial, and the distal convoluted tubule. Please. So, renin is now in the bloodstream. Renin will travel the bloodstream, and when the renin and when renin reaches the liver, um, renin will interact with a protein in the liver called angiotensinogen. Renin will cleave angiotensinogen, or split angiotensinogen, or breaks angiotensinogen into pieces to form angiotensin 1. Okay. So when angiotensin 1 is formed, angiotensin 1 is a, is a weak basal constrictor. It doesn't do anything uh, to constrict the blood vessels. But when angiotensin 1 is formed, angiotensin 1 will travel again to the bloodstream, and then when it reaches the lungs, angiotensin 1 will be converted into angiotensin 2 by the angiotensin converting enzymes, or the ACE. We also have is in the kidneys, but it's in the lungs, particularly in the pulmonary capillary endothelium, where the conversion takes place. Okay. So once angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2, then we have a, a potent vasoconstrictor. Okay. 
In our body, we have several receptors for angiotensin 2. We have receptors in the kidneys, we have receptors in the uh, central nervous system, and also in the heart and the blood vessels. So in the kidneys, the angiotensin 2 receptors are found in the adrenal cortex, particularly in the uh, zona glomerulosa, where it secretes aldosterone. Okay? Aldosterone acts in the desalkinated tubule to reabsorb sodium and excrete potassium. That's the role of aldosterone. And also in the collecting ducts to absorb water. We absorb water because where sodium goes, water goes. So that's one of the sites of the angiotensin 2 receptors. Also, angiotensin 2 um, acts on the proximal convoluted tubule by reabsorption of sodium and exchange of the hydrogen ions. We also have angiotensin 2 receptors in the central nervous system, particularly in our pituitary gland, the anterior and the posterior pituitary gland. Most of the hormones are produced by the anterior pituitary gland, except for these two hormones. We have the antidiuretic hormone and the oxytocin, which are produced by our posterior pituitary gland. So when, when the um, uh, angiotensin 2 binds with the angiotensin 2 receptors in the central nervous system, the posterior pituitary gland will release uh, antidiuretic hormone. And this action takes place in the water channels, in the um, collecting ducts, we call it aqu aquaporins. So instead of the water being made into a pee, the antidiuretic hormone will say, oh, oh, don't go to the pee, okay, reabsorb back into the circulation, back into the circulation. So that's the antidiuretic hormone. And also in the hypothalamus, when uh, the receptors bind the receptors of the central nervous system, the hypothalamus will stimulate our thirst sensation, thirst. So we will be drinking a lot of water because the third sensation is stimulated. So you have to drink a lot of water and you have the sodium reabsorption and then you have the uh, antidiuretic hormone. So what happens? Increased blood volume, which in turn can increase the blood pressure. And aside from those, there's one most important part, um, location of the angiotensin to receptors. And uh, that is in the heart and in the blood vessels. In the heart, it is found in the cardiocytes and the fibroblasts. And in the blood vessels, when angiotensin 2 receptors bind with the angiotensin, uh, when the angiotensin 2 binds with the angiotensin 2 receptors in the blood vessels, that would cause vasoconstriction. And what happens with vasoconstriction? Increased blood pressure. So according to David Boy, Bowie and the Queen, high blood pressure pushing down on me, pushing down on you. No man has four. High blood pressure. All right, so that's it. From renin, from the release of renin, the conversion into angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, into binding the receptors, the end product is increased blood pressure. There are three medications that block or disrupt this pathway or this whole process. We have the ACE inhibitors or the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. We have the angiotensin 2 uh, receptor blockers, we call it ARBs. And then we also have the aldosterone antagonists, um, which are some of our uh, potassium sparing diuretics. The ACE inhibitors act in the lungs, prevent, prevents the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So you don't have angiotensin 2 because it, the conversion was prevent, is prevented in the lungs. In turn, you cannot trace the blood pressure. So that's the role of your ACE inhibitors. The ARBs, you have angiotensin 2, you, you, have, you produce angiotensin 2, but because you are blocking the receptors of angiotensin 2, so the blood pressure will not be going up. Okay? There's no increase in blood pressure because you're blocking uh, angiotensin 2 um, receptors from angiotensin receptors from binding to the angiotensin 2 receptors. And then the uh, aldosterone antagonist uh, example is the uh, spironolactone or aldactone. Um, all it does is it prevents aldosterone from performing it, its actions, its functions. You know, aldosterone can serve sodium and excrete potassium, 
now it's the other way around uh, sodium is excre ex excreted and then potassium is reabsorbed okay so they have a lot of side effects for all these medications but among the three we have a common electrolyte in electrolyte imbalance this is affected and that is the potassium okay because all three all three um blocks the action of aldosterone so more sodium wasting and potassium reabsorption so patients taking with these medications will have hyperkalemia as a side effect but as I and that's it and if you enjoyed this video um, click the subscribe button and repetition repetition is the key is the key to learning to keep on watching these videos until it will be stored in your hippocampus our hippocampus is the storage of our long-term memory so if you enjoyed this video again invite your friends and friends and friends to like and subscribe the channel and to watch the videos bye